What's up guys? Today we're working on the 1996 Toyota Camry again. As you could probably tell, these are two CV axles here and it needs them and it needs them badly on both sides. The CV joints are clicking, the boot ripped a while ago and I replaced it with a quick boot which is a temporary boot that you don't even have to take the axle off. It comes in two pieces and you basically clamp it onto the CV axle. So I replaced it with that a while ago, but now those are ripped, so we'll just get new axles for it because the axles went bad. And um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get to work. All right, so let's jack up the car. Cars up on jack stands. Let's go ahead and take the wheel off so that we can get to the axle. Now I'm going to be using my brand new, well almost brand new, uh, impact from Harbor Freight. So to take the wheel off just because it's faster but if you do it and you don't have an impact then you're going to want to loosen the lug nuts before you put the car up on jack stands otherwise the wheel is just going to spin when you try and loosen them, but with this, it won't because it's going to just spin the lug nut. So I forgot to mention, in case you don't know, that's a 21 millimeter socket for the lug nuts. And now let's get ready to unbolt this axle nut right here. So basically what I did is I took the top two bolts off the strut, or the bottom bolts off of the strut, and that allowed me to pivot the whole knuckle and rotor and everything downwards this way so then I can then push the, the axle out. I did not want to take the tie rod off because I didn't want a chance accidentally turning it or, or something and messing up the alignment. So, and technically as long as you don't change anything in the tie rod, so as long as you don't turn it, the alignment should be fine but I didn't want to take the chance, so all I did was take this off, pivot it down, take the axle out, put the new one in, and then pivot it back up. So that's, that's all we're gonna do. If you want to, you can take the tie rod out, and in the video, you'll see me take this whole strut out completely out of the car, and that is only because I can get a better angle with the camera. So you don't have to do this. As I said, on the other side, all I did was I just undid these two bolts, that hold the strut onto the knuckle and I was good. That's plenty of room to, to move around and move the knuckle, take the axle out and everything. But just for this video, I'm gonna take the strut out completely just so I can get the camera in there and show you on the other side. Now you can do this, it will actually give you more room to work and it will allow you to actually not have to turn because you'll see there, the axle is held on by some bolts in there and it, this will, taking this off will allow you to not have to turn the axle every time you want to get to the next bolt. So it's actually a little bit easier, but it's a, a little bit more of a process. So I'm just going to take this out for the video, but you don't have to. Alright, so let's go ahead and take these two bolts out. So basically, I'm going to be using my impact again. And as I said before, that's just because it's quicker. but you can just use a breaker bar, break the nut loose, and um, and then just keep you know spinning the nut until the it's loose, and then take the bolt out, blah blah blah, so on. But it's a 22 millimeter here up front, so we're gonna use a 22 millimeter socket on the impact, and I have just a regular non-impact socket that I'm gonna put here to hold the bolt in place because at some point. Once I loosen this up, it's going to uh, start spinning. So I have to hold the bolt and impact the nut at the same time.
All right, now if the bolt doesn't want to come out, just help it along with the hammer. There we go. If you do have an impact, this is just the Harbor Free impact and you know, it's not the greatest. It did take a while to take these bolts off, but it's it's faster than doing it by hand obviously, but on the other side, they were actually so tight that the impact couldn't do it and breaker bars can be more powerful than electric impact sometimes, so I had to take the breaker bar out and actually break them loose and then put the impact on it. So now on this side we're going to have to take the ABS sensor off and the brake line off the strut so that we can pull the knuckle out without damaging anything. And the brake line is going to be held on by a 12 millimeter socket and the ABS by a 10 millimeter socket. At this point, if you do wish to take this whole strut off, or out, I should say, all you have to do is undo these three bolts at the top and it should just come out. So I'm just gonna do that right now. All right, so now that the strut is out, you will also want to remove this plastic shield right here so that you can gain more access behind it, basically, where the, um, where the axle is. Okay, so now that we have that shield off, you can see that's the axle right there. Those are the bolts that you'll need to undo to get the axle out. They are eight millimeter Allen head, so you'll need that. And before we take those off to get more room, we're gonna have to take the axle nut off. So let's get to that. Now to take this off, we'll have to take off the cotter bin that keeps it in here. After we do that, we'll take this off, and then this is the nut that we'll have to undo, and it's a 30 millimeter socket that fits over it, and I strongly suggest that you do not get a 12 point socket. If you don't know, the 12 point sockets look like this. They basically have 12, it looks like a star. I suggest that you get a six point socket, which are just the uh, hexagonal ones, because these fit over more snug, so to speak. And not necessarily snug, but, well, it's actually not a 30 millimeter. I don't know why I was putting it there, but they these have more of a chance of stripping the nut or the bolt that you're trying to take out because they don't hug every single side completely. So get a 30 millimeter socket on here. Now, I'm gonna try impacting this off. On the other side, I was successful and hopefully I am on this side as well. But if you don't have an impact, you can use a breaker bar. I just don't have long enough of a breaker bar, I think, to even try. So this impact wrench here technically is supposed to put out 240 foot-pounds of torque. I'm just gonna use the impact. I'm gonna impact it off and hopefully it comes off easily. off it comes. That was uh, a little bit easier than on the other side I must say but still pretty pretty tough. To get this out of here typically if you're reusing this axle you do not want to hammer this but these are broken. Well almost broken. They're clicking which is why we're replacing them. Sorry I didn't say that in the beginning but they're broken. We're gonna take them out we don't care so hammer.
And there you have it. It's out. Came out on the other side. The knuckle is loose, so that's good. Just be very careful with the ABS sensor. They're very sensitive to shocks and the wires are thin, so just be careful, don't pull on it. Be careful that when the knuckle comes down from the suspension, it's not still attached to anything or stuck on anything, so just don't pull on it, basically. All right, now that the axle's out of here, we can go ahead and take those bolts out and just pull the whole axle out. Now, these boots are actually blue because they're some quick boot or, you know, aftermarket CV boot that I put on a while ago because the, the original boot ripped, but obviously the axles had already been a little bit damaged, so eventually they just, they just started clicking and then because this is not a good, you know, good quality rubber boot, whatever, it ripped, so the grease all leaked out, so I just said, screw it. This is actually my girlfriend's car, so I just told her, you know, just drive it until it starts clicking, and it did start clicking a while ago, and now I'm finally replacing them. So let's get to those bolts back there. Now those bolts right there are an eight millimeter Allen. So I'll leave a link to all of these tools in the description, including, you know, the impact, all the sockets, these, everything I use is going to be in the description, so go ahead and check that out if you're interested in, in purchasing them. But let's go ahead and take these bolts out and take the axle out. Now you may not want to do this, but I actually made myself a huge extension from multiple extensions just so I could have room or you know enough length to put it in there and have the ratchet out here and be able to turn it freely. So let's go ahead and take these out. Now they shouldn't be very tight. I think they only get torqued to 48 foot-pounds. So you should be able to take them out. Oh, I forgot to mention, you have to block off the other wheel, otherwise this happens. Think of this as taking off small lug nuts. If you don't block the other wheel, you're going to spin it. So let's go ahead and block off the other wheel. Now this is why it's important to have the other wheel on and secured because what I'm going to do is shove a breaker bar where is it? right here between the wheel, the caliper, the brake lines, and the chassis. And now when I want to turn it, oh, not going anywhere. Alright, so let's get those bolts out. So you get the hang of it, just uh, keep turning the axle as you need and take all of them out. There should be six. If there are not six, be concerned. So go ahead and take them out. All right, now this is my last bolt. Once I break it loose, I'm really hoping the axle is not going to just fall out, although it doesn't seem like it's going to fall out. Oh, and I forgot to mention, when you take them out, it's going to come out with these little not clips but kind of brackets so it goes it holds two bolts around the axle I'm assuming it's to put an equal amount of torque everywhere keep them because if you're buying the same kit that I am from or not kit if you're buying the same axle that I am from Rock Auto which I will link in the description then it will not come with these it'll just come with the bolts so keep those. Now, let's double check that we did everything. We did, so technically if we pull, it should just pop out. There we go. My light fell. Just needed a little shake. So this is um, the inner CV joint, which is, wow, this is stuck. This is so hard to turn. So I'm assuming this one is gonna go, was going to go bad soon. The grease is hard. It's like super hard. Um, it's not even grease at this point anymore. It's like a hard paste. And the outer CV boot, well, this and this and that. It's 
so, you know, I don't even need to say anything, it's just junk. And before I get the new one, I would like to clean up a little bit of that old grease in there. So I'm going to get some paper towel and just kind of wipe it off. Oh, and I forgot to mention I'm doing this because the new axle came with a lot of grease. I'm able to just throw this, this out and it's not like this is going to help anymore. This is literally just hard grease. It's old. So it's not going to do much anymore. So I might as well just throw it out. Also, if there was a gasket there, make sure you scrape it off. Apparently, all there was was a piece of gasket for this one. So, I don't know where the rest is because it's not on the axle. All right, so here's the old axle. I put it on the ground, which is why it has all that nasty stuff in it. But as you can see, the grease is all caked up and hard. And I don't know if you can tell, but the CV joint here kind of wobbles like a wobble head. So obviously that's not supposed to happen in it. When I pull it out and then push it back in, I hope you can hear that. That was a mosquito. Um, I hope you can hear that, but it has a lot of play to it. And so does this. So, good thing we have our new axle which is solid up here and solid up here. Let's get that in. Okay, so this new axle came with a gasket, which I, I think it's easier to just put it here to start with and then um, maybe put some, some grease in there just to keep it in place. On the other side, I put it, I just had it on the axle and that's how I put it in, and it worked out pretty well. So, I don't know, whatever you think will work, will work best for you. Now before you do anything else, you're gonna wanna take the grease that comes with the axle, so hopefully yours comes with grease. Again, if you order the part that I ordered, which is going to be down in the description, it will come with this. So, what I did is I just pushed the joint in, and then I just squeezed pretty much all of this in there, or as much as I could. You just put it in there, and you squeeze it really hard. To make sure you have gloves on, because this can get messy. All right, so after you've put the grease onto the CV joint, or onto the axle, I just remembered the reason why I found it easier to put the seal on the axle is because when I put the grease inside the axle, it got grease around it, so it helped the gasket stick to it. All right, so here's the finished product. It's really hard for me to show you because it's heavy and it's at an awkward angle, but that's what it, it looks like. Now I'm gonna get one of my new bolts and put it through so that when I get the axle on, I can start threading this one on. That way, I can hold it on there. All right, well, once the first one's on, it's gonna be like the happiest moment so far because this thing is pretty heavy. So it's really hard to hold on and tighten that while matching the holes and keeping the gasket on at the same time. So it's a bit of a challenge. But we got it on, now let's continue with all the other bolts. I'm not gonna film it in details because I'm just putting in bolts. And then they get torqued down to 48 foot-pounds. So I'll be back in a second. All right, so now that the bolts are all on, let's torque them all down to 48 foot-pounds. And make sure you torque them down in a star pattern. Okay, so now that all of those bolts are torqued down to 48 foot-pounds, let's get the axle back into the knuckle, right in there, and put everything back together, and then we're done. If the axle doesn't want to go in, that means the splines aren't lined up, so just twist the knuckle and it should go right in. Now that it's in, get your new axle nut. And honestly, 
This is technically supposed to be torqued to a lot. I'm not really sure how much. Um, I believe on the other side, I ran it down with the impact until it stopped turning. So that should be somewhere around 200 foot-pounds. And I read online that it's supposed to be somewhere around there. So don't take my word for it. Look it up for yourself. Um, sorry I don't have this information, but I'm just going to run it down with the impact. Now this here is no joke. You really want it to be tight because, I mean, yeah, sure it has the cotter pin, but, you know, it's, it's, it's your axle nut. If that comes out, you're kind of screwed. Now get your new whatever this is called, put it over, make sure the hole lines up for the cotter pin, get your new cotter pin, plop it in, and twist it over, or bend it over, so that it locks in place. Make sure you bend it all the way, don't leave it sticking out because you want it to be inside of this circle here because this is where the, the wheel mounts to the hub. Oh, look what I forgot. You know, don't forget these because now I have to take it back apart and put these in. All right, now that this is all done, I got those brackets in. I didn't even have to take anything apart. I was able with my long extension, get in there, get two screws at a time out put the bracket in, tighten them back up, torque them down again, and uh, now let's get the strut back in, put the bolts back and be done, because this did not take as long as I expected. Now if you do decide to take the top off like I did, just make them snug. I think the torque spec is somewhere between 30 and 40, so maybe 35 or something like that, but just make them really snug, that should be good. Now as for the bottom, make sure to reconnect the brake hose, ABS line, all that stuff needs to go back. Sorry for the bad lighting, but it got dark outside and I only have one light. Alright, it is all done. Everything is torqued back. These are torqued to 150. This is torqued to whatever, you know, like 200 or something crazy. Put this little clip back on here for the ABS line. Bolt these back to the strut back here and the brake line as well. And then you're done. This is pretty much it. All we have to do is put the wheel back on and take it for a drive. Actually, one more thing. We need to put this shield back on and then we'll be done. All right, so now that that uh, cover is back on, we're ready to put the wheel on and we're finally done. Oh, by the way, did you notice daylight again? Yeah, it's the next day. I stopped working last night. So let's get the wheel back on and then take it for a drive. All right, and this gets torqued to 80 foot-pounds. And of course, don't forget to pull this out because that's how I was able to torque the wheels because I forgot it in there. Okay, so now that the car is down on the ground, it is ready to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it was helpful and let me know down in the comments if you have any suggestions. Bye. Stay tuned.